902 light years is how long it took it to originally get here and we're going to show you basically it touching earth okay and it's not the first time that light has touched earth and we're going to go ahead and show you that okay and this object is basically that far away from and Mebsuda or Mebsudo, however you want to pronounce it, is a star that was that five quad point three quadrillion miles away. And basically, just watch it basically get up behind the moon and light the moon up. Now, another video should have uploaded first. And basically, here you got the moon coming up. And you will end up, you have to, it'll be a hard time trying to freeze it to get it, but they do mark it. And that is what gets up behind the moon and basically makes the moon hella bright and hella large and basically that's why a lot of people end up making it look man the moon looks like two moons right now it's basically that star behind the moon on our hunter moon and basically then we hit this light that takes 903 years to hit earth and as you will see those are objects that are in front of the moon because basically the moon lights those objects up basically three or four remnants are basically a lot more material than that and then there that light hits the earth and let me blow that up for you a little bit basically you're watching what is out in front of the moon and basically every time something gets lit up we get to see the objects as i.e. you've seen those planets that are basically in front of the sun and in between us in the dark side of earth on our back door normally but we're in a very unique position right now and that's why we get a lot of magnetical activity and i.e. the rings and all the moons around those objects and as you see we're going to show you the rings around that one planet where the idea that it has more than one polarity because the idea that it seems like a planet or a moon that is coming around uh, that big planet that will that you should have seen from the video if you watched in order you watched the video before I made this one now basically there you have the objects and the light energy from 903 years ago basically coming in onto the earth okay and here is this light energy hitting Earth, okay? And basically that's off the moon. And that's it there. And I'll probably be able to get over here and hit play and then scoot back over and you'll be able to see. It almost basically, and a good deal is go to the Earth, Earthquake 3D and then you'll be able to see the light sphere that basically usually is the heating of the Earth that ends up causing quakes. And there you go, hitting the Earth. Okay, and that's basically objects in front of the moon that made that happen and hit Earth, okay? Because basically it is a reflective, 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 refractory telescope, reflective. Basically it reflects what is in front of all the illumination out in space. When they get in transit, they end up giving us what will end up coming down to us to be able to see and then that's why you end up seeing the objects that were in the video before and I'll actually freeze this again and we'll go in and study the magneticism of the objects that are end up hitting earth so once again we're playing just a, a day at a time and nothing is in between the Sun and earth Mercury's not in front the moon's not in front nothing's there so you know that these objects are there and that's all the way to the November 7th then Mercury starts getting closer. For right now, all this stuff that you're gonna see at the Hawaiian telescope when you look at it in the morning is gonna be what's in front of the sun, in between the sun and Earth. And Venus is not it because basically Venus is very bright because of the supergiants and a lot of stars. And here comes the supergiants. Then we'll be able to freeze and we'll get a refractive, just like a telescope, and we'll be able to see what's in front of uh, Earth. And there goes Venus away, here comes the supergiants and here comes the sun. And there's Saturn, and Saturn's behind the sun. But you do get be able to get an angle of, of it. And there we go. So basically we freeze it to see our planets that are in front of Earth. And we're going to look at the one that has more than likely two different polarities because the actual factual that in it there are a planet that goes around the one planet and it has a orbital that goes around it and basically that's this here planet here I pretty much call this Pepsi 
because this is not this one here as you see the bands on it are wider okay which basically are the rings around it and they're not completely they're basically in an evolving state like what Saturn is. Maybe we'll have time to throw some of Saturn stuff on here, but we'll basically go down and blow this shot up. We're gonna go right in and basically you know that you're not, we're showing you refractively, and I know I'm saying it wrong, but like a refractory, refractal telescope, you get to see that there is objects going around this planet and also objects going around this planet here and this has more than one set of rings. It's got rings here, a pair, and it also has these here planetoid moons around this planet here, and they're pretty equal in size. Now you get what's actually in front of the sun right here if you look at this, and we'll blow this up and look at this, because basically you got this and these three here, and also this below here. But no matter what, we get a real good blow up of this planet here, which I call Pepsi, and also this one here to roll over. And I'm at the video, so I gotta make sure I don't let the video play. And this one has these rings here. Now, we have to basically, if you can freeze it and get ahead of it and see if there is, if there is any more rings, because we could be missing some rings that are below down here. But for sure, this one here has got all these rings around it here. It's got two pairs of rings. So basically, this is a bipolar planet that is in front of the sun. Bipolar meaning that it's actually a quadpolar, excuse me, that's what it might be another way to explain it. Because we are bipolar, we have a positive and negative charge that Earth has, and it's magnetic that I've showed you through space all the time when we're looking at Soho and Sechi. So we can blow this up more and look at these rings and look at these planets that are basically, they could be planets because they could be darn large. We know that this one here, I can tell that this one is pretty darn large. As you can see that this has this ring around it and it looks separate than the ring that's around the planet. And you can pretty much see it here. There is a huge moon or planet that has a magnetical ring around it. So I would call it a planet because it's got a magnetical ring and it could actually have another magnetical ring below it. And it also has these moons more than likely that are part of this system here and also of this huge planet because this is not Saturn, ladies and gentlemen, okay? But it has rings like Saturn, all these do. This here Pepsi that I call, this here, and also this planet here. And we get this in the darkness of space with all the light from the supergiants and the sun being able to expose these planets that are between us and Earth, i.e. back up the video and see that there's nothing between us and the sun except for these objects here that basically you get a refractive telescope view from it from the light off of the sun and the supergiants. So let's blow this up. Yeah, I've got to be careful making sure not to let the player go. But basically, we have what is might be formal hot right here below. Okay, right here, a smaller sun. This may be formal hot right here, and then we're getting the sun there. And then we have Alraf up there behind the sun and with Saturn. Okay, and then we come down, we got the sun, and then we have more than likely, like I'm saying, formal hot. And basically, we're seeing the shadow of it when at Neomeyer Station when you see all those black blotches. That's what basically this is formal hot ended up being looking for whatever does actually probably revolve around formal hot, a sun. Also, when it ends up being in front of the sun and down at the South Pole at Neomeyer Station. Now, here are the magnetical rings. We're blown up at 800. And these are the magnetical rings in the moons that go around. And basically this is helping us understand what is going on on Saturn because we know that there are a bunch of moons in the rings around Saturn. And here are a bunch of moons around rings. And basically when we blow up larger, this is what I'm talking about, that this basically has a planet very close to this planet here and it has a ring around it. Okay, and it might have more than one ring, but here is a ring right there around this planet right here. Okay. And it actually may be a silhouette of this moon here, but it really does look like there's basically a moon here, possibly the shadow of the moon right here, but then it could be also another moon there. But there are a lot of objects around this, and now I just screwed up and hit the player. Hang on. Here we go, zooming back in. We'll go to custom. 
I'll hit 800. And we'll get back into looking at our magneticals and our moons around whatever planet that are up by Pepsi that are in front of the sun between us and Earth. And hopefully I have not hit the player. And we'll get back over and see what we've got over here. Now, what we could see earlier is on the lower resolution, basically the lower zoom, is you can see the actual objects over here that basically are these objects that you see reflected that are basically in front of the sun and earth. So you get an idea of these belts that are around these objects and these this is our one that over here to the right that has basically that big planet next to it so basically we got one two and three because basically there is four planets because we can see the smaller one that is next to this one here this huge one here is right there so you see all this stuff that is smaller here telescoped and reflect ref, reflected to us in a refractory telescope manner by this light off the supergiant and the sun right now. So you can get over here and you can see the rings around that planet down there. And you can see the planets or moons that are around here that have rings. And this one here has a ring around it separately right there. There's a ring in a belt. This is one of the rings that's on the planet just like that are on this one down here to the right. And also that are on Pepsi, I call it, over here to the left. And I don't drink, and I'm not advertising for Pepsi. I just basically, you could also call it the baseball. I could call it that, but the idea that it doesn't have an actual, like the stitchings on a baseball. Okay? So, I'm beginning to believe that I'll probably call this one baseball down here to the right. And the other one up here, I'm going to call this, and basically the baseball would be somewhat of a sister of... Saturn because it's got two rings. It's got a, like a halo ring there and that magnetical ring there and also these moons here. And it's just very easy. This is just like a refractive telescope showing the image. Just watch the video before and you know, I'll show you ba basically when transits and what's basically a shadow of a planet is the, the same size or smaller. And basically these are reflective, reflective shots of these objects here that are in front of the sun and us. And as you can see, there are a bunch of moons here on this one and another large moon or planet next to it. And then you have to decipher that basically all four of these objects pretty much have rings and an extra moon or planet next to it very close. So we've got an interesting cluster of planets and you can't deny the rings and basically it's all magnetical. This is this, these four rings here, boom, 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 and also the one planet here that has a ring around it. And also that there is a large planet or object here, whether you want to call them moons or not, we won't know until we get a closer look, i.e. you got to watch the video before this one to be able to understand that Mercury is pretty much a moon. And you can see the actual factual pictures from NASA on it. So basically, historically, here on Halloween, we end up from the video from the 30th to the 31st, we end up capturing this stuff. And you'd probably be able to see it when you can get to the beginning of the 30th also. So you got to go back and also take a look and see what kind of separation we get of these planets in a view. But this is a very spectacular view that we get of these rings, of these planets. And Saturn ain't the only planet out there with rings. We have a planet that we need to name. And basically... I'm wondering, basically we know that they already have probably coordinates and a hip number for these objects. Because they're mass objects, that means they're very large. And they are in front of the sun. And then we do have evidence of I, I sun is more than likely going to, which is basically a comet, but basically is a planet because comets are not really icy objects. We know that also. There's a video I'll be able to show you in the future. And I've made mention of it that the idea that we know that, and that'll probably be the next video, that we know that comets are not icy balls. They are basically large massive objects going through space. These are very large objects that are between us and the sun. As you can see, the magneticals, boom, 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 
Espero que me 